Good morning, friends. Uh, I'm Sham, and uh, I've been called here. And thank you to uh, Outdoor Travel Gear, Mario, and uh, Sagar for having me up here today to speak about my good epic ride to Bhutan. Uh, I have with me my friends uh, David, who I rode with on the way to Bhutan. There's uh, Amit Pradhan, and there's Pierre, who rode on a different day but on the same trip. And we met up in Darjeeling in Bagdogra. So yeah, I'm here today to talk to you guys about the trip. Uh, it was a 21 day trip planned meticulously. Our ride started off from uh, Bombay. We started about four o'clock in the morning, me and David. And uh, the route we chose was from going up north till Udaipur and then banking east on the uh, Golden Quadrilateral Road right up to Allahabad. I think that was the second stop, am I right David? And then the third stop was uh, down to Purnia in Bihar, and then the fourth next the, the fourth day, which was a half day kind of thing, we rode down to Bagdogra. So the first trip was till Darjeeling. So that's us. We started off in the morning. Uh, I'm just highlighting the the importance of having reflectors on your thing in the morning. You know, very important when you're riding early morning or late evening, because this is what will probably you know save you. So that's when me and David started off in the morning and uh, headed towards the first stop which was Udaipur. But uh, we did good speed, no, but we did good speed and hence we did uh, Chittorgarh. So we arrived, we were to arrive uh, Udaipur by about 6 o'clock in the evening and uh, unexpectedly we arrived at about 4 o'clock. It was a good run, two of us, few stops, just small ones. And we made uh, Udaipur by I think about 4 o'clock, 4, 4.30. Yeah. So then we thought of riding the next day's leg also you know so we rode up another about 180 kilometers so first day was about 930 or 935 kilometers all about on the first day so bombay chitorgarh second day we started off again in the morning at five and that's where the actual good quadrilateral road run all the way from udaipur right through kota then you get a bit of a little two road patch you know two road uh, stretch so then we got into kanpur and actually we were headed for lucknow but we took the wrong uh, road, elevated, we took the elevated road and then after about some 30 kilometers odd, we realized that, uh, you know, Lucknow is not on this stretch. And uh, the next day from Allahabad in the morning, we started off and the next was supposed to be Purnia. Correct? We were supposed to get into Purnia and to Bihar. Uh, David knew of a place where we could stay. That's very important, you know, for all your stops. You need to have a nice, nice place where you can you know, relax, eat, all single point kind of thing, you know. So, we got off to Punya. So, on the way we passed, uh, what is that? Bodh Gaya. Passed Bodh Gaya and few all these Begul Surai and names I had never heard of before, you know. And uh, we reached a place, I think, Begul Surai? Yeah. From after where we stopped for tea and the guy told us that the next 40 kilometers is bad road. So, we kind of thought, okay, bad road, yeah, I mean. Yeah, just cross the Ganga. Yeah, cross the Ganga. And then you got bad road about 40, 40 kilometers to reach Purnia place. So you crossed the Ganges, got onto the bad road. I'm telling you that bad road was like the moon. There we were no doing road. about there was no road, and it's a national highway. It's a national highway. There was no road as such, and apparently it hasn't been done in the last 20 years. And when it's been done, they get it rid, they get rid of it again because they it's apparently this stretch is known for these decoits. They rob the trucks and buses and things like that. That we got to know after we reached Purnia. We did it in darkness because by the time we reached there, he told us we'll get. We were in Udaipur, we were west, so the sun was setting late, okay, and rising, rising, so rising late, and so we got onto the east thing. We had covered so much distance across that you know by about 5:36 it starts getting dark, and that 40, 45 kilometers took us about four hours, and we reached Purni at about 10 in the night. Me and David, he was talk tired so was I you know it was coming into a fatigue period because that that 40 kilometers tired us it was dust dirty I mean there were times when I you know go down and I you know David is in front of me and then I don't see him you know I can't see him he's gone down somewhere and then the next thing I know I'm going down and there's a truck and all I can see is only lights and dust complete <laughs> off-road complete off-road and we were not with off-road bikes you know he's on a Harley you know I'm on the Kawasaki which is a tour sport tour so nowhere it was a Thing. If I had that triumph or something like that, you know, like a, a Paris Dakar rally bike would have been the best road to ride on. So, anyway, so we got through with that, reached at night, and we met up with another friend, Saurin Sarkar. 
Shah. So we met up with him at uh, Purnia in the hotel. He he came a different route because he came via Orissa and he did some Bhubaneswar and all these places he did. And then he come up and met us there yeah, via Calcutta. So he met up with us there. And then the next day from Purnia, we started off for uh, Siluguri. Siluguri. So Siluguri, we had to arrive, I think around 11, 11.30 because the wives or the girls were flying and all the babes were flying in into Siliguri and then we were to have a, like a 5-6 day holiday up in uh, Darjeeling. Yeah. So that's what it was, we arrived there, we welcomed them at the airport. Some of the wives rode with their hub hubbies up, you know, some in the car going up and things like that. So, yeah. So now we were 9, 9 of us plus uh, Gautam, correct? So it was 10, 10, 10 bikes. Gautam is a local uh, Darjeeling guy who we outsourced kind of thing to help us with the Bhutan leg of the tour because you need a local kind of body and uh, in all along Bhutan you know because every checkpoint so he kind of does these things he's done Nepal he's done Leh Ladakh and stuff Bhutan I think was his first was his first ride into Bhutan but he kind of did well so yeah he did yeah so let's see some pictures on that one this is one of the camping nights he organized at uh, Punakha, correct? Yeah. Just by the just by the riverside, really chilly night, cold water flowing just beside you. You could throw your beer. We put up. We did the beers in the in the water, and as you are thirsty, go pull out the thing. You know. So that's one. That's the campsite in the morning. You see the river by the side, up in the morning up. So good campfire. Arrange the breakfast, the dinner, and everything. You know. So. That's me and David heading up on our way to Bhutan. So, so yeah, kind of windy roads in all of Bhutan. You know, you, very rarely you'll get a straight kind of stretch for about two minutes, five minutes. The rest of it is all windy. That's with the family up in Darjeeling. I think most important part. This is all your. That's how you get the visa to go. Otherwise, you don't get. If you don't involve this, permit, this yeah. bit, the permit to go is not there. Yeah. That's up there. Kanchan Kanchan Chunga in the back. That's what you see. So, you know. Yeah, this is tanking up. Very important thing where we missed one. He would have been out of uh, petrol. This is the one before Kota. This is a lovely place to be at. I think this was one of the most memorable thing. This Chilela Pass. This is the highest uh, road pass that has been built by Dantak. Three nine eight eight meters. So roughly you are close to three that twelve almost twelve thousand feet. Yeah. This is. Uh, Due to with uh, Saurin, who knew the uh, brother, brother-in-law of uh, the present. present king of uh, Bhutan, he kind of knew him, and we were invited to his uh, thing. He also is a Hali rider, yeah. So he's and he's looking forward to come to India as well to ride. This is one of the days when I sat with David to film the rest of the guys. Makes it very easy, you know. This is one of our support truck so very important thing to have when you're doing a ride in a certain place so you can stuff all your bags and everything onto the jeep and then you can ride free so your pillion seat is you know free you don't have the weight behind you <laughs> this was damn funny yeah. we were we were tanking up I, I doesn't need an explanation the leaf says it all it grows along this is a very cheap variety that grows on on the road only this this i think was the highlight of uh, bhutan Tiger's Nest, yeah. amazingly, and it's amazingly far. This is, so, this, is this is not even halfway. This is one third, but a good day indeed. We were like, it's not tiring because you take those stops often, but uh, it's a good. Uh, I think this is the highlight of Bhutan. Hi, uh, I'm Amit. This is Pierre. We formed the second group that took up to Bhutan. Any road trip, you know, with experience now has to be done with people who are like-minded because the road is not very forgiving. It takes a lot out of you physically as well as mentally. Riding to Bhutan, crossing seven states, seven states, two countries, is the thrill of doing something that you like. Also, you realize that you see your country from a different eye. Things that in, you know, in a city like Bombay, you would not normally see, understand, and it really hits you. You get closer to you know your essence of a human, you realize what you have, you value it, and you enjoy the trip more. 
another thing that you realize is that something that sham rishi and all taught us is that you need to be prepared some equipment that you feel is absolutely unnecessary you think why do i need to carry the weight but then when an incident occurs like a small one of our riders had a small little flip on the way back from bhutan and we had a long uh, towing rope we had to lift that bike onto a truck and around eight of us couldn't do that if we didn't have that rope so pierre got into the truck and tied up the bike and you know tried to yank it up and that's how we could do it so small things sham with a packet of dates so every time you stop if you want to go to you know answer nature's call you don't have time to go to a dhaba sit and eat though it's, it's lovely food on the way so just pick up a packet of dates and you know shove it into your stomach gives you energy and go on <laughs> an energy bar is nothing like it but then you know how many times do you remember to carry an energy bar so small things that really matter camel packs i mean they're a boon you do not know how dehydrated you get riding i don't know whether the air pulls out all that moisture from you but then it's it's that you know small small thing that you need to take care of while sleeping you know when somebody like him snores you need ear plugs so don't forget your ear plugs where we go so yeah, we're planning is a key i mean we started planning one year before uh, doing the trip and uh, we circulated excel sheet with stuff which we had to carry and then slowly everybody checked out what they needed and what they didn't need and yeah it was, it was really good and i think biking is getting good now uh, really really good roads in india except the odd stretch here and there but uh, i think brilliant road and uh, a point i mean i would i would like to say to all those people who feel adventurous there is no way no plane no train can replace a road trip whether you do it on two wheels or four wheels you have to get down there smell the dirt get your face and hands dirty and that's the way to enjoy so all the best for your trips yeah but i think two wheels because they say four wheels move the body but two wheels move the soul yeah. amen <laughs>